The first time I laid eyes on Lisa, I was like, wow, now this is a top model. All of her photos are so regal, so artistic and flawless. The woman can pose. She makes taking pictures look like an art form. She looks so effortless and graceful. Clothes on her look like it was drawn on her or sculpted. It don't even look real. What an icon. But so many people don't know about this beauty. There's not enough videos out there on her for me. And she deserves way more than that. Lisa Fonse Gleaves, she was a Swedish model, dancer, sculptor, and photographer. She is credited with having been the first supermodel. And Lisa also became the first model ever to grace the cover of Time in 1949. She is stunning in every sense of the word. I am truly speechless, right? Looking through her photography is like, wow, wow, wow. Y'all know by now I love models, I love fashion, and I love photography. It's very rare that my mouth drop when I look at a model, right? The only other models to do this to me is Katusha and Wilhelmina from Wilhelmina Models. And I did videos for both ladies, which I will put in the end card. But my goodness, Lisa is the reason that modeling is an art. She said so herself, and I quote, making a beautiful picture is making art, isn't it? End quote. She also would do whatever it took to get her the best photograph, okay? Even enduring pain or heat. There were no strobe lights, and this is a direct quote from her about this. She said, there were no strobe lights in those days, but very hot spot. Often live thousand watts on either side of you, and the exposures were long. You could feel the sweat trickling down your face, and the assistant would come over and hand you a towel. In fact, I remember one time in New York in the 50s when I was modeling for coats in the summer, and there were no air-conditioned studios then. It was so hot that I just fainted and they propped me right back up and I went right back to work, end quote. In late 1940s, when most models were paid only $10 to $25 an hour, she was earning $40 an hour. And that was a big deal during those days before you like, what? It was a lot, okay? When most models' careers ended before their 30th birthdays, hers flourished until she was past the age of 40. She was a frequent subject of Penn's photographs for Vogue magazine, particularly his studies of French haute couture. She epitomized a very noble period of fashion and couture. She gave a classical dignity to anything she wore. As elegant as she was, she always remained very humble. Lisa had a down-to-earth attitude to her modeling success. She was quoted in a 1949 article in Time Magazine as saying, and I quote, it is always the dress. It is never, never the girl. I'm just a good clothes hanger, end quote. In this video, we are going to, of course, break down her style, fashion, do a whole model profile for her, and get into her childhood and her wonderful career. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Kareen Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's start with her model profile. She was known for her five foot seven height and 17 inch waistline. Lisa carried a tape measure, which she handed to anyone who doubted this impossible measurement. She was like, you don't believe me? Come see for yourself, okay? When asked how she maintained her figure, she highlighted the importance of eating in small quantities. She was known to consume up to 10 tiny meals a day. A tiny meal might consist of six grapes, one cracker, one slice of cheese, and a half of glass of wine. She was always eating something, but never anything too much. She was a huge fan of portion control and discipline in the kitchen. Never eat much was her motto. Looking at her photographs give me this burning ache to bring back the fashion of the 40s and 50s. I mean, the glamour was insane. Women led with elegance and still came off very sensual without being half naked. Their sensuality was in the slightest movements of their hands, the way they tilted their heads and their mesmerizing shy gazes. Their walk was an art form. They sat with such grace and had so much charm. Even if they were being naughty, it was insinuated very subtly that everyone understood without it being vulgar. What an era for fashion and sensuality, right? Of course, the era was not the best for women's rights and people of color, but if we could just take the fashion and the class and bring it to this new era, I would be the happiest girl alive. Comic 
below your favorite era for fashion. I also love the 90s. Such a colorful, vibrant, but sophisticated era for fashion too with all of the supermodels. I feel like this generation today is missing the sauce, the flavor, and the touch of mystery that our past generations had. Models aren't a big deal anymore. No one cares who, who's on the runways these days, right? And the less you wear, the more popular you will be. Looking at Lisa's pictures make me feel homesick for an era that I never lived in. Is that even possible? <laughs> I guess so. Her photos really tell a story of what it meant to be a picture of sophistication in that era. Just flawless. And I'm sad that we never got to see, there's no videos out there of her walking or anything like that. She was just known just like Wilhelmina for her photographs, you know, but you can just tell, honey. But before we get into her biography, there's just a few timeless tips that I gathered from looking at her life. For all of you ladies who desire to have that effortless 1940s essential you can skip ahead to the biography if you're not interested. I'm just going to give you guys four quick tips. Number one, Lisa believed in wearing perfumes that matched her natural body oils well. She wore a scent called Amouage, which she did a campaign for, and believed that a lady should always have her own signature scent. Do you have your signature scent, ladies? Comment below what your signature scents are. Second is makeup. She loved a highly arched eyebrow and a bold red lip. She believed makeup should be sharp, neat, yet natural. Makeup should also highlight your best features without looking like a mask or too heavy. She had a smaller face, so she thought people with smaller features and smaller faces should not wear bold lashes that would overpower their face. And third is she believed in playing with colors. She would often wear red nails her favorite color was said to be red so leave a red heart in the comments for her and she also believed in finding the colors that best suit your skin tone and stick to those colors when it came to fashion which is the fourth she also loved wearing hats scarves gloves and was a big fan of elegant jewelry pieces we have to remember she was also a painter and a sculptor so she loved fine things for shoots she didn't mind looking dramatic with the fur coats etc but in her day-to-day -day life she simplified her clothes often if you saw her wearing a necklace she would not be wearing earrings vice versa she wore straight leg pants with collared shirts finished with a belt she was very cultured as well as we will see later in the video so she didn't feel all women had to look the same as long as the clothes are coordinated and layered artistically she had more of that old money aesthetic you know not too much <laughs> that everybody emulate with the regal face but what i gathered from her life also that made her so popular and have that sensuality is her art of mystery lisa spoke a lot about her childhood as we will see she did speak about her life but she did it in such a tasteful way that we don't know anything about her she's like a figure of mystery even her children never said anything scandalous her husbands all still adored she had two husbands okay and they had still adored her she just lived a way where she was still very private very mysterious and we didn't know much about her at all she took her photos she gave her interviews when it came to the realm of fashion and left it at that that left an aura of mystery naturally whenever you have that aura of mystery where people want to know more about you but it's not so easily accessible they have to get really close to you to get any bit of information it naturally just gives you that sensuous appeal right and she also was very graceful very elegant with her movements her touch it was very intentional everything that she did she played with lighting a lot whether in photography or with makeup and how she contoured everything was intentional so some surface level tips of course but comment below your own tips and advice that you have in the comment sections. I'm curious to see. Now let's jump into her biography. She was born under the Nordic skies of Sweden on May 17, 1911. Lisa was destined for a life woven with artistry and glamour. She grew up with her two sisters. Her father was a dentist and her mother was a qualified nurse. Her family was cultured and artistic and her parents would often take them out to art exhibitions. Her mother was a pattern creator who wove rugs and tapestries while their father would paint in his spare time. As a child, she was cradled in the arms of creativity, indulging in painting and sculpting while swaying to the music of dance. Her thirst for dance led her to the esteemed halls of Mary Wingman School in Berlin, where she honed her skills in art and dance. She said of this era in her life, and I quote, 
My parents were very supportive of the arts. In fact, my childhood vacations were spent driving through Europe with them, visiting museums. My father painted and encouraged us a great deal. My mother also is very creative and beautiful." End quote. Upon her return to the serene landscape of Sweden, she shared her love for dance by opening a school. However, the allure of ballet in the vibrant city of Paris called to her. She embraced this new journey, marking her foray into the world of ballet. She embraced this new journey, making her way into the world of ballet and working closely with Fernand von Sagrives, who later became more than just her dance partner. It was during these Parisian days in 1936 that photographer Willie Maywald found her by chance in an elevator. He was captivated by her grace and asked her to model hats for him. These photographs found their ways to the desk of Vogue and renowned photographer Horace P. Horace took test photographs of Lisa, marking the beginning of her illustrious modeling career. By the time she set foot on American soil in 1939, she was already hailed as a top model. But do you know Lisa during this time didn't know anything about fashion? She said this about that era in her life and I quote, One day we were coming home after a very long day and in the elevator a man told me that he was a photographer and asked if I would like to model hats for him. I was terribly shy but flattered that he would want me to pose. I was so young and naive. I did these pictures and my husband took them up to Vogue. I arrived terrified. I had never seen a fashion magazine. I didn't know what fashion was. I made all my own clothes and I remember the suit I was wearing. Dark brown wool and I arrived so frightened with my hair long and wild and completely unmanageable. No one knew what to do with my hair but it was my hands that troubled me most. What to do with one's hands while posing. Her enchanting beauty graced the covers of prominent magazines such as Town & Country, Life, Time, Vogue, and the original Vanity Fair throughout the 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s. Her talent and elegance earned her the title of the highest paid, highest praised, high fashion model in the business. She often referred to herself as a good clothes hanger, embodying the garments she wore with grace and style. Through her career, she collaborated with renowned fashion photographers, including Man Ray, Erwin Blumfeld, Richard Avedon, and Edgar de Avia. Her personal life was intertwined with the world of photography, as she married Parisian photographer Fernand Fonsegreves in 1935, and later American photographer Irving Penn in 1950, becoming his muse. And after bidding adieu to her modeling career, she ventured into fashion design, creating a leisure wear line for Lord & Taylor. The 1960s saw her transition into sculpting, with her work being represented by the Marlboro Gallery in Manhattan. Lisa passed away at the age of 80 in New York. She died of pneumonia, but she lived a pretty peaceful life, pretty quiet life, just being the icon that she is. Just like with Wilhelmina, they're very interesting. I would definitely want a book or a movie. Like she was the first to really make this an art. I know you guys heard of several other models before, but yeah, she made the top model. She wasn't the first model, <laughs> but she definitely was the first super. Okay, she was the first super. I know many people like to say Gia is, but she came before Gia. And so we're gonna give her her flowers. And I did a video for Gia Karenji also, if you guys are interested. But wow, what a woman, right? Comment below your thoughts. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Who else do you guys wanna see a video from? And if you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. I love you guys, until next time.